In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings of peace and joy, my sisters and brothers. We all know the importance of having a model, a role model before us when we begin to do something. I remember when I was studying in the seminary, I looked up my senior priest. I saw their commitment. I saw their love for God. It motivated something in me to to grow up was what they are doing. Today, the church presents before us a role model, role model of the family of Nazareth, whom we call as the Holy Family. And indeed, the most holy family ever lived here on this earth, the family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. They are a role model for all of us in our family life. We call them holy family because their life was centered around the person of Jesus. Jesus was the center of their life. All their activities, all their decisions would be based on Jesus, centered around the person of Jesus. Second, Mary and Joseph always had the deepest desire to do God's will in their lives. Mary, in her response to the angel, said this, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. From then onwards, Mary's life is all about doing God's will. Joseph, yes, initially he thought of leaving Mary in secret, but once he got that announcement through the angel, he, she, he changed his mind and accepted Mary as his wife. And from then onwards, Joseph also had the same desire to do the will of the Father. So two ways in which the Holy Family became holy, Jesus is the center of their life and their desire was to do the will of the Father. My sisters and brothers, maybe let us begin our reflection on that. In order to make our families holy, these are two areas that we also need to pay attention. Is Jesus the center of our life? In our problems, in our difficulties, in our challenges, do we go to Jesus? In the Bible again and again we see various people approaching Jesus. Zacchaeus, when he had a trouble in his life, when he felt somewhere empty, he went to Jesus. Mary and Martha, when their brother was sick, they went to Jesus. When uh, Peter's mother-in-law was sick, there he invited Jesus to his home. We see so many families going to Jesus in their moments of trouble and difficulties. Look at your family. Are you a person or is your family centered around the person of Jesus? If you buy an expensive mobile from a mobile shop, if something goes wrong with that mobile phone, you will take the mobile phone back to the showroom, back to the place where we bought, where you bought and tell, yeah, we bought it from here, but it is not functioning now. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are a married couple, imagine this. Where did you get your husband or your wife? When did you begin your family life? When God gifted you, your husband or your wife, right in front of a holy altar, there God gifted you. There you got your spouse. So when you have a trouble, when something goes wrong in that relationship, when there is a difficulty in the relationship, go back to the place where you got. Go back to the place where, where you received the gift of your husband, wife. There, tell the person who gave you, tell Jesus, you, you will see God working in your life. My point is this, in our times of trouble, difficulties in family life, in married life, go back to the person who give you your life partner. Go back to the person who give you your children. Go back to the person who give you your parents. You will find God intervening in your life. Make Jesus the center of your life. The first way in which we grow into holiness. Second, 
Mary and Joseph had the utmost desire to do God's will in their life. Do we have that sort of a desire? That stubbornness, the deepest desire, I want to do God's will in my life. Whatever be the price for that, I want to do God's will. When that becomes a priority of our life, Matthew 6.33 will happen to us. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Rest everything shall be given unto you. God will provide for our needs. When we join with the opinion of the gospel, when our desire is to do God's will, then God will take us through all the difficult moments of our life. I recently met a young man who got a promotion in his office to, to a higher post in his organization. But then that needed relocation to another city. Leaving his family here, he had to relocate to another city. He tried whether he can take the family along, but that was not possible. Then he said, I don't want that promotion. A salary hike to so many privileges, he said, I don't want it because I value my family first. Because he had the values of the gospel. More than money, he valued the, the family as a result. He chose to stay back where he was with that position that he had. My sisters and brothers, let us do God's will. Let us make Christ the center of our life. That our families also may become holy families. Moving ahead from there, we know the way we use a thing or a place gives that thing or a place a name. For example, if I buy a piece of cloth from the textile shop and then I stitch a shirt with it, so we call that shirt, that piece of cloth now as a shirt. Or let's say I stitch a curtain, it becomes a curtain. Let's say I begin to use that piece of cloth for mopping the floor or dusting the, the furniture, so it becomes a mopping cloth or a dusting cloth. The way we use the thing gets a name. Let's say we build a building and in that building we begin to uh, educate children, so it becomes a school or a college. Or we begin to treat patients, it becomes a hospital. Or you begin to sell things and buy things, it becomes a market. The way we use gives the building, the thing, a name. Now apply that principle to our family. The way we live our family life gives our family a name. The family of Nazareth, Joseph, Mary and Jesus, their attention was all on Jesus. Their focus was only to do God's will. Thus, we call them holy family, we said now. Now look at your family. If in your family, there is constant fight, there is constant nagging, constant accusation, constant blame game, constant use of abusive language, then call your family maybe a marketplace. These are things that happen in a marketplace. Has our family become a marketplace? Let's say if in your family there is dead silence, no one talk to each other, there is nothing to speak to each other, there is always some kind of a cold war and enmity, no talk, no relationship, then call it maybe a symmetry. Symmetry is a place where no one talk to each other. A place of silence. Let's say in your family the interest, the motive of the family is only to make money. How we can make money, how we can make more money. Then maybe your family is a bank or a stock exchange. Focus is only money making. If your family is a place where you look at your family as a place where you have a place to sleep, a shelter and you get food to eat, then, but there is no relationship, there is no bonding, there is no warmth of relationship, then your family is a hostel. Hostel is a place where people come to stay and go. Let's examine. 
how am I making my family? Is my family a holy family? The holy family of Nazareth was built on the sacrifices. There is, yes, if anything valuable, there is a sacrifice. Let us look at Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary, how did they make their family a holy family? In the life of Joseph, we have a beautiful description. I wish to read from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 19. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Let us look at Joseph, the just man, who never uttered a word. You don't have to be a man of big words to be a just man. He was a man of silence. Now look at his action. Every action comes from an attitude. Here was an action which Joseph was planning when he came to know that Mary is with a child. Mary is pregnant. The action which Joseph planned was to leave Mary in secret. In that we see an attitude hidden. What was that attitude? Joseph said, yes, something has happened which I do not understand. In the right way, According to the Jewish rule, Joseph can bring Mary for public scrutiny, put her to shame, accuse her, stone her to death. But Joseph says, no, I will not cause pain to Mary. I won't be the reason for Mary's tears. I will leave her in secret and go away. Let people think that I, I have caused this. Let people blame me, but I don't want to put blame on to Mary. I don't want to accuse Mary. I don't want to cause pain to Mary. My brothers and sisters, husbands and wife listening to me, ask yourself this question. Do you have this attitude? I will not cause pain to my husband, to my children, to my wife, to my parents unjustly. If you can say that, I will never be the cause for someone else crying unjustly. If we can say that, we have the attitude of Joseph and we are building up holy family. We are building up holy family. So often, we cause pain to others, unjust pain. By our words, by our indifference, by our attitudes, are we causing pain to others. Second lesson from Joseph. Joseph had taken a decision. Yes, I will leave Mary. But that night, when he received that dream, that inspiration from the angel, he changed his decision. There are times we take a decision, but then God speaks to us through scripture, time of prayer, through an inner inspiration, God speaks to us or through some other circumstances, God speaks to us. Are we ready to change our decision or we stick on to, yes, I, I decided I will not change. When God speaks to us, are we ready to change our decision for the greater glory of God? Joseph is a just man. Let us be just in our families. I wish to look at our blessed mother as a model again. In the life of Mary, one moment, one big moment of trouble in the life of Holy Family was when they lost child Jesus in the Jerusalem temple. Mary and Joseph, how perplexed they were when they lost child Jesus. But they did not accuse each other. They did not fight, yeah, you are the reason, because of you. There was no such accusation. They both in uh, great agony came back to Jerusalem in search of Jesus. And they found Jesus in the temple. When they met Jesus in the temple, what did Mary say to Jesus? Listen to this. And when this is Gospel of St. Luke chapter 2 verse 48. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. In that one little sentence of 
Mary. Again, we can see an attitude of Mary. Actions comes out of attitude. Words comes out of attitude. What was the attitude of Mary there? If you were to be there in that place, you lost your son, searched and found, what would you say? I have been searching for. I have been. Or I and your father. But Mary said, your father and I, your father and I have been searching for you. Meaning to say, Mary would have been a woman always gave that respect and honor to her husband, Joseph. Respected and honored her husband, Joseph. Though she is a privileged one, she had that respect which is due to her husband. My sisters and brothers, again, a point for all of us to reflect. Do we, ref do we respect others? Wives, do you respect your husbands? Husbands, do you respect your wife? Let us learn to respect each other. Let us learn to value each other. Let us build up our family. This feast day of the Holy Family invites all of us to examine, evaluate our families so that we make our families holy families. After the model of the family of Nazareth, may Jesus bless us, may Joseph and Mary intercede for us that we can make our families holy families. Amen. God bless you.